Hey friends. All right. We are here. Happy Monday. I hope you're well. Um, I am again in the box. I'm not sure how wise this is, but you guys get to see me and I hope you guys get to hear me. Okay. Um, someone just let me know how we're switching to my better mic. Cause I think I'll sound, I'll sound better. So someone just let me know how I sound. Um, I am in my pajamas. Uh, I thought about like putting on real clothes and like getting dressed for this, but this is like craft hour. So, so I'm in my pajamas. Hey, Mary. Hi, Teresa. Hey, Ro. Hey, Christy. Yes, Tashi's in the little box. You guys, you guys are probably going to set me up again today, but I am in the box. Um, hey, hey from Venezuela. What's up? How are you? What's going on? Okay. Hi guys. All right. So, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I did everything except turn on my heat tool. We're embossing. And I don't know. I don't know if this is a good idea. But um, yeah, I switched my mic. Uh, I forgot to switch to my better mic. So we're embossing. Not sure if this is a good idea. I'm going to put it all the way over here so it's not super loud. But it does need to heat up so I can use it. All right. Um, yeah, I'm in PJs. Like I'm literally in reindeer pajama pants. We are keeping it nice and easy over here today. I came home from work and I was like, should I put on real clothes? Um, I am totally setting myself up, Christy. We don't talk about it. I came home from work today and I was like, should I put on real clothes for the live? And then I was like, nah, I'm hanging out in my PJs. So literally in a pajama top and a headband. That's what we're doing. We are taking it super easy. So today we are, um, hey Steph. Hey, Teresa. Hi. Hey, Bethan. Sorry if I miss, hey, Caleb. Sorry if I miss anybody saying hi. I'm not doing it on purpose. It is just, you guys are coming in very fast and I might miss you, you guys. I'm sorry about that heat tool. It's going to go off really soon, but I have learned throughout my embossing adventures that if I don't let my heat tool heat up, then it is useless. So we are letting it heat up. So today we are catching up in my October, not quite daily. I have three uh, layouts. I use the term layouts loosely. I have three layouts planned um, to catch up. That's not going to work. Never mind. Oh my God, there's embossing powder all over my Misty from last night's embossing shenanigans. So I probably should clean it. Um, yeah, so we are catching up on my October not quite daily. That's what we're doing. And there's embossing powder all over my Misty. Uh, because I was embossing the other day and completely making a mess. Like I literally spilled white powder all over my desk. It was an adventure. We're not going to do that today. So I had posted a video where I was doing some heat embossing and everyone was like, you need an anti-static powder tool. You guys, I actually, in fact, do have one. I do have one. I never leave it in videos because I feel like it's boring and nobody wants to watch me use one, but I do in fact have an anti-static powder tool. Um, Hey Leah, what's up? Yes, so we are, we're going for it. So we're keeping it nice and easy over here. I have, like I said, three stories that I want to tell in my October. Oh, you guys, you guys, I am already off to a bad start because I am inking the back of my stamp. Okay, how many meltdowns am I having today, you guys? I'm literally inking the back of my stamp. We're not gonna talk about the fact that I just did that. So let's try this again. Note to self, put the stamp down the right way. I was literally inking the back side of my stamp, which is not the side of the stamp that ink's supposed to go on. I can't believe I did that. Okay. Anyways, I have a few stories that I'm telling in my October album today. Um, and if this is your first time with me, I am not doing like a traditional like Halloween themed October daily. Mine is all fall themed. So I have a, a mix of supplies. Some are like traditional fall supplies. Some are just random things that I felt like using. Okay. And the reason I have this stamp in my Misty is so I can ink it with my Versamark more than once. Okay. All right. Sorry about the shaky cam. I got to put like a lot of pressure on this to make, this is a newer stamp. So to make sure that I get like a good, ink. I gotta just put a lot of pressure on it. All right, that looks pretty good. 
And this is a new stamp from Carrie Bradford Studio. If you haven't seen it, I already know my embossing's not perfect. That's okay. I don't go for perfect over here. I just want it to be done. So we're going to do an emboss resist, which is why I'm embossing. Not because I enjoy torturing myself on camera. <laughs> like, I, I really don't enjoy torturing myself on camera. Um, hey, there we go. That actually doesn't look terrible. Like, it's not perfect. Um, but it doesn't look terrible. All right, so I got a little paintbrush where I'm going to sweep away excess powder. All right, that actually is not half bad. Okay, so I'm going to flip it, put it back in my Misty. Because I want to stamp again. Oh, hey, Jess. Hey, Millie. Hey, Crystal. What's up? Happy Monday. I'm flipping it and putting it back in my Misty because I want to stamp again. So I'm going to put it back in here. Get this magnet out of the way. And then I'll be able to turn off my heat tool and it'll stop making noise and it'll stop torturing all of us. So you guys, if you don't have a Misty, I don't know how many times I can say this. My Misty is literally life changing. It's the reason I can stamp. Also, I got a few new things today. I got some microfiber towels to have in my craft corner. Also really nice for like cleaning ink blending brushes and for pressing on the Misty door. That's not gonna work. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Hold on, I might need to reevaluate. I don't think this is gonna work the way I want it to because my stamp's not 100% in the door. Hey, hey, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, Apprehensive Owl, we're gonna see if I remember. Is your name Crystal? Because I feel like your name's Crystal, but I also don't wanna like get it wrong, but I really, I'm trying to remember names and I really feel like your name's Crystal and please tell me I got it right. I really hope your name's Crystal and I didn't just give you a brand new name. All right, I am coating this with anti-static powder tool. We're gonna put this flower stamp in here. I don't like the Tim Holtz uh, platform, Heather. I have it, um, and I have better success with my Misty than I ever had with the Tim Holtz platform. So I did remember, yay! Okay, that makes me feel so good because I've been trying, like I've been practicing names, and that makes me feel really good that I remembered. Oh, hey, Crystal, so what's up? Yeah, so Heather, I have the Tim Holtz stamp platform. I did not like it. And I tried it for like three months and I did not like it. And I think I'm just gonna stick to the Misty. I mean, it is an easier price point than the Misty if you're just starting out because a Misty is a bit of an investment, but I'm not a fan of, which is weird because I love everything Tim Holtz makes except that. All right, we're gonna ink this up one more time and we're gonna emboss and we're gonna move on. So I have five, three stories. I'm making a five by eight layout uh, a five by eight spread and a six by eight spread. My, um, my October Not Quite Daily is definitely more traditional scrapbook style. So it is a hodgepodge of different sizes. I have pages that I made for it that I just haven't put in the book yet. So I can't even show you what I've done because I have no idea where it is. But I have pages that I've made so far. I actually made a pocket page, which was like, what, who are you? I did actually make a traditional pocket page. And then let's get some embossing powder on this. Let's see how terrible I am. Oh, it's actually not bad. Okay, there we go. Let's just sleep off this extra powder. We're gonna heat set this bad boy. And then we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some ink blending over it. Okay, there we go. I'm actually just gonna leave these stamps in the Misty because I don't think I'm using my Misty again for the rest of the night. And I do not wanna waste time cleaning a stamp set. So I'm just gonna leave these stamps in my Misty because I gotta clean off the extra powder. Uh, I'll deal with that later. By now, my tool should be nice and hot. Let's emboss this. Okay, yep, heat tool's nice and hot. So this will take like a few seconds. So I was talking in a video about all the things I learned about embossing. The number one thing that I wasn't doing was letting my tool heat up. This is from Carrie Bradford Crystal. It was from this month's release. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm just going to keep embossing this and then I'll start talking because it's really hard to talk over this thing. Hey, April, you're not late. We are just getting started. It's been 10 minutes and all I did was stamp some flowers in embossing ink. We haven't done anything fun yet. We're going to do some ink blending. Uh, so we're going to do some emboss resist over top. I'm burning my fingers. So I am embossing in white powder so I can do some emboss resist. Hey Joanne, what's up? Oh hey Crystal, I didn't even say hi to you, how are you? I miss you, I didn't talk to you at all today, it was weird. Oh you guys can see the powder melting, it's so weird with white powder because it's like can you see it melting? Does it look like anything? And this is bigger than five inches because after I do the ink blending, I'm going to cut it down to size. We are almost done with this embossing. This is literally like watching paint dry. I am so sorry. Almost done. Okay, there we go. Oh, so much quieter already. So weird. All right, look at that flower. It's so pretty. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to grab it. We're going to put it in this thing. This is my uh, Wendy Vecchi art station, which is my favorite thing to ink blend on. And we are going to do some... I really think watching embossing powder melt is satisfying because I know how to do it now, Heather. But when I did not know how to do it, it was the most frustrating thing in the world. Um, I have slowly figured out embossing. It was not something that came to me. And I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I know nothing comes naturally to like crafters. Like you have to practice everything. But embossing was one of those things that I was like, I'm never going to figure out to how to do it. And I'm never going to do it. And so that was okay. All right. So I have some Distress Oxides, which probably surprises no one because this is me we're talking about and I'm always ink blending, but I have some Oxides. I've been trying so hard to emboss Crystal because it's such a, I don't know, it's a fun medium and I've just been struggling and so I've just been practicing. The Wendy Becky Art Station is amazing, but then I love it so much. I'm gonna go get some Post-it tape. There we go. Got some post-it tape. I love my Wendy Becky art station. Uh, this, these little magnets. I lost a magnet though, and that makes me really sad. I gotta find one of my magnets. I lost one. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of post-it tape on my fingers to hold this down so I don't get uh, my fingerprints everywhere. And we're gonna start ink blending. So I have a microfiber towel on my desk, and that is to allow me to quickly switch colors on my brush. So I have Tattered Rose, dried marigold, scattered straw. Oh my God. So you guys, my face is gonna rock back and forth for a little bit because me ink blending disturbs my camera that's doing the face-to-face -face view. So if there's a little earthquake in the Tashi in the box, just ignore it, it'll go away really soon. Um, so Natalie, I'm trying something new. I don't know how successful it is, we'll see how it goes, but I am trying something new with the picture in picture, but it does, the, the way my camera's attached to my desk, I, I will wobble while I'm ink blending. So, so sorry if that like drives anybody mad. Um, but yeah, I have a microfiber towel on my desk, which makes it really easy to switch colors. Hey, you were jelly plating. Crystal was jelly plating. You guys, I was actually thinking about pulling my jelly plate out for something tonight, but it's so messy. Um, and I don't know if that's just something I wanna do live because it's so messy. So I don't know if that's something I would do, but I really thought about pulling my jelly plate out. So I have a microfiber towel on my table. I literally just scratch off the extra ink and then I can go right into another color. So if you don't have like a million ink blending brushes, you don't need a bunch of them. You literally just need a microfiber cloth to scrub off the extra ink. And these Alta New Blending tools, you guys, I just, I don't know how like, how excited, like I don't know how much to tell you guys how amazing this tool is, but these are just, these Alta New tools are just amazing. They make ink blending a snap. Um, they have mini ones now. I ordered the mini ones. Mine haven't come in the mail yet, which makes me really sad. I ordered the mini ones. But the thing about these, 
that I don't think you can do with the blending tools, like the foam ones, is after you do your circular motions and you're trying to overlap your colors, um, after you do the circular motions and you're trying to overlap your colors, you can literally just scrub back and forth in like a linear motion with these. What's a jelly plate? Oh, Mary. Now you're making me want to pull out my jelly plate and I really can't do it because it's just, it's too time consuming, but you're really making me want to pull out my jelly plate and use it. So my plan was to make some jelly plate backgrounds um, and then die cut them into leaves and it's just not something that I want to do live because it's messy and I would have to get up from my desk a million times and clean my plate and do a bunch of things, but I really want to pull it out. Okay, we'll see how I feel after. Look at this blend, you guys. All right. I don't know why my camera lighting is so weird, but we're, we're slowly tweaking my setup. So if it's not perfect, you guys, just give me some grace. I'm slowly tweaking it. This is not like a professional operation. So sorry if my lighting is doing strange things. All right, so what did I say? I have dried marigolds, scattered straw. We're gonna go into ice spruce. And we're gonna finish us out with some speckled egg. And that is my, this is what I've been calling my autumn rainbow. Uh, last time I had, um, oh, I just totally lost that yellow. I'm gonna go back in with more of that yellow. Last time I added aged mahogany, but I didn't want any really like deep saturated colors. So I used tattered straw. And I'm just gonna go in and put more of that yellow over this green, cause I totally just lost this green. So a jelly plate, uh, Mary, to quickly answer your question, a jelly plate is a uh, silicone plate where you, um, how do you explain a jelly plate? It's a silicone plate. What do you do? You can apply mediums to it and you monoprint. That's what, that's the word. It's monoprinting. A jelly plate is for monoprinting. Um, so you can use acrylic paint. You can use water-based mediums. You can literally use anything. You drop it on the plate. You put something on top of it. You can put stencils or anything else, and then you pull a print. And that's what it is, it's mono printing. All right, you guys, there is the blend. Um, it's a little weird over the yellow and the green, so I'm just gonna go in and try to soften that a little bit. I don't know if ice spruce and scattered straw blend together as well as I wanted them to. Uh, and that's me experimenting with this color combo. This is not one that I've used before. The good thing about the oxides is they layer over each other, so I'm just gonna work at it until I like it. So we're just gonna go back in right over this yellow and this green. Oh, I clean my plate. I have to clean my plate stuff. It, it would bother me if I didn't clean my plate. And I clean my plate between every print. All right, there we go. So that is a tattered rose into dried marigold into scattered straw into ice spruce and speckled egg. Now, if I could do this again, I think what I should have done is what I did last week and use bundled sage and not ice spruce. So now I know. And then you just take a paper towel and you buff off that extra ink and the white embossing powder comes through. And there we go. That's what, that's what that looks like. Now, sorry about the light. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to light this. So that's what that looks like. We are going to uh, trim this down to size now. Where's my paper trimmer? We're gonna quickly trim this down to size. So I want this to be five inches. And I think I started with it being six inches to give myself room to cut off on both sides. So we're just gonna quickly trim this to five inches. There we go. And again, this is what I'm calling the autumn rainbow. So uh, April, if you've hung out with me for any stretch of time, you're going to want oxides. They are my favorite ink and I use them all the time. I stamp with them, I ink blend with them, I do mixed media. We're, gonna do, we're actually gonna do some more mixed media with them so the oxides are not going away. All right, so that is what I have so far. And then I'm going to, all right, I really want to stamp on vellum. I am terrified to stamp on vellum, but I really want to stamp on vellum. 
So I'm gonna attempt to stamp on vellum, and if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, and that's okay. But I am going to attempt to stamp on vellum, and I'm going to use, I'm gonna use my mini Misty. Sorry, I'm reading these sentiments. I'm trying to use every stamp in this set. Uh, so I didn't actually get this stamp in time for release day because there was a delay with Carrie's manufacturer. And if honestly, I would have used it for release day. Uh, this is from Carrie Bradford. Uh, is it Edie or Eddie? I hope it's, is it, is it Edie? I'm going to go with Edie. And then if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Um, but this is from Carrie Bradford. It's one of her, it's from the most recent release, which was, sorry. September? October? What month are we in? It's from the October release. I'm like, what month are we in? I have no idea what month we're in anymore. Um, so there we go. I'm going to grab my archival ink, which is my favorite ink for stamping on. Ah, uh, you see, you guys, my enabler is working in full effect. Crystal's off to buy some oxide inks. Um, yeah, so Crystal, if anybody's interesting in starting an oxide... Oh, Edie, perfect. Um, if anybody's interested in starting an oxide hoard, um, I did a video where I uh, did some color matching for December Daily, and I recommended some oxide inks. Um, so if you're just looking to get into mixed media and you're going to do it for December Daily, that's a... Oh, shucks. I moved this, and now it's not in the same place, and now it's not going to line up. I think I moved my vellum. So if it doesn't work, it's not because of the misty. It's because I moved my vellum. Um, yeah, so I did a video with some ink oxide recommendations if you're looking for a place to start. Um, also, I will put in the Mighty Network a, like, starter palette. I'll put in the Mighty Network a starter palette if you're... Oh, see? I moved the vellum. Never mind. We're going to get a new scrap of vellum because I moved that one. It's going to make me crazy. I'll put in the Mighty Network a starter palette if you're looking to get into oxides. So I'll do that. Um, I highly recommend... I don't know. I think they're just a really good universal ink brand. Like a universe, they're a hybrid ink, so they're pigment and dye. So you get the best of both worlds. Um, and they're just a really accessible, a really accessible medium. Uh, Julie, I will 100% always say go get them. I do understand that everybody's not a, a collector like me, so you don't need. I I don't know if anybody know, if everybody knows this, but I just completed my oxide collection so I have all 62 colors um which is a little bit of a point of pride I am a collector at heart so I have all 62 colors you don't need all 62 colors okay so Julie so Julie if you're a member of the mighty network I will put uh like an oxide starter palette but also if you're gonna get them for December daily I already have a video with color matches for all of Ali's products all right my archival is so dry, it is not stamping at all. I need to get a reinker for my. Uh, so, a girl in a sweater. I don't know your name. Please tell me your name. The difference between a regular and so, so that's the the question is what do you mean by a regular ink? The difference between the oxides and everything else is they are a pigment and hybrid and dye ink hybrid. So most people, most ink companies um, do a dye ink and the oxides are. So Sarah, if you do want to know the full colors, you go to the Ranger site and the Ranger site has, has um, the full palette. That's how I knew what colors I was missing. And Ranger has like printables you can use to label your stuff. So yeah. Um, if you're interested in what the full palette looks like, Ranger has, why is this not stamping? All right. I'm trying to get the, it's beautiful out there to stamp. It's not cooperating. Um, but yeah, right. who said that? Sarah. Uh, Sarah, yeah, if you're interested in the color palette, just go to the Ranger site. I am just trying to stamp on this vellum. It is not cooperating. I wonder if it's because this magnet is here. I might have to move this magnet. Oh, geez. This happens to me all the time with my Misty, by the way. My magnet sticks to each other. Okay. My... <gasps> Never mind. We're not stamping on vellum. Never mind. Do I try it again, you guys? Do I try it one more time? Because I just smudged it. So do I try it one more time? 
I guess I try it one more time. And if it doesn't work this time, we're not stamping on vellum. And we're going back to the drawing board. Because I really want it to say inhale, exhale on... <sighs> I really want it to say inhale, exhale on a piece of vellum. And I want to staple that to my tag. But I've also spent probably a half hour trying to stamp on this vellum. So if it doesn't work this time, we're going back to the drawing board. Cross your fingers, you guys. Let's see if it works. Um, so I have some close to my heart inks. Those are our dye inks. All right, try one more time. Okay, you guys say one more time. I normally don't have trouble with vellum. The trouble I'm having is I'm trying to stamp two sentiments at the same time. And that is my fault. So I'm going to try to stamp one sentiment first and then stamp the second sentiment since I'm having trouble stamping two sentiments at the same time. You know what the definition of insanity is? It's doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That is what I am doing, is I know that I can't stamp two sentiments at the same time, so I'm just gonna keep trying. This is a close to my heart archival, because my Ranger archival, which is my favorite archival, uh, my Ranger archival is dead, but this one's working really well. So with stamping on vellum, Stazon is a good ink, and Archival is a good ink. And I've never tried the Close to My Heart Archival on Vellum, so we are experimenting and it's working really well. I'm also getting ink all over my Misty, so. This is why everything I own is horrifyingly gross. Um, clear embossing powder to keep your ink. So I would do that, Jennifer, if I didn't turn off my heat tool. <laughs> like, I just turned it off and I don't think it's hot enough. I don't like, so Stazon does work, Stephanie, but I don't like Stazon, so I don't have any. I, once my Stazon ink pad dried up, I stopped using it. I don't, I'm not a fan of Stazon. I don't like the way it smells. I know there are a lot of people who love the way Stazon smells. I don't. So I don't like the way Stazon smells. All right, that is okay. I'm all right with that. I don't like the way Stazon smells, and so I just use Archival, because Archival works fine. What I need to do is just let it dry and not mess with it. All right, so first sentiment down. Um, I, I just, so st that too, that, that stays on dries out really fast, but also I just don't like the way it smells and I'm super sensitive to smell. So I would rather use something that doesn't have a strong smell like archival. Archival doesn't smell like anything. So I'd rather use archival. All right, you guys wish me luck. We're trying the second sentiment now. I'm gonna not do what I did before, which is let my magnets get stuck to each other. Stop it, magnets. Stop it. Oh my God, it's doing it again. Okay, never mind. Stay down there, magnet. Stay. All right. Yeah, so I don't like Saison. I, how have you never noticed a scent? Oh, it's the first thing I noticed about Saison. The first thing, the first thing I noticed was that it smells funny. Also, should I be stamping with my like Distress and Ink panel like right underneath my Misty? No, that's, that's how we cause trouble. That's how Tashi ends up having a meltdown. Um, yeah, I'm Beth, I'm gonna go. Okay. What am I doing wrong with this second sentiment? Is it the magnet? It might be the magnet. All right, we're gonna give this one more try because there's ink everywhere except on the vellum. And if it doesn't work this time, we're moving on. Oh, there we go, it was the magnet, see? I learned something today. Don't put that magnet there. All right, perfect. I'm gonna leave this in my Misty to dry and try to clean up all this extra ink I have everywhere. My fingers are covered in ink. It's horrible. I might actually have to take a break and wash my hands so I don't get black ink everywhere because that might be a problem. So we'll see. We'll see how long I last before I start smudging things. Last week I smudged things in the first five minutes of the video. Um, you think it smells like cinnamon. That's so strange. I guess like sense of smell is such an individualized thing. I find that like maybe we should all share what we think Saison smells like because I think it smells like permanent markers and that's not my jam. So I don't like it. All right. So we just need a few more things for this one. And then this one's done. It's not anything terribly involved. Keeping it nice and easy. I do need another stamp. Where is the stamp? Was it this one? Mm, was it this one? No, it was this one. So I'm gonna uh, stamp and die cut a little tag. 
so I gotta clean this stamp. I'm gonna stamp and die cut a tag to do some hidden journaling because the story that I'm telling on this particular tag is not something I want front and center. So I'm gonna quickly clean off all this extra, all this extra embossing powder, um, embossing ink from this. Where's my mini Misty? Where'd it go? Never mind. So I'm gonna quickly clean off all this extra powder, just drop all these stamps, get them out of the way. And I'm gonna dye a tag. We're gonna do some tags. Stays on is, it totally smells like permanent markers to me. I thought I was the only one. Um, and so I just can't get behind how strong it smells. And don't get me wrong, it's a great ink, but I can't, but I can't get over how strong it smells. And I think that there are better inks that don't smell so bad. So that's why I don't use stays on. All right, we're gonna quickly cut some cardstock down for a tag. I'm going to attempt, attempt being the strong word, I'm gonna attempt ombre stamping. Again, we're gonna attempt it. And if it goes well, then yay. And if it doesn't go well, then I know to never attempt it again. I have, my misty magnets are like running away from me and I have no idea where they are. All right, so we'll see. We're gonna attempt some ombre stamping though. So I have a panel in here I'm gonna pop this flower right in here oh that magnet is already in the room what is wrong with this thing hold on oh there's black in my stamp i think there must have been extra water in my on my chamois so we're cleaning it off all right wait crystal what are you doing Crystal, go smell your stays on. This is totally a thing. Crystal, go smell your stays on. So, Natalie, I think you can get uh, better images without stays on. Um, or images that are just as crisp without stays on. I have given up on stays on, and I still think my stamp. So, my. I actually think. Wait, wait, what? Crystal, I mean, Crystal, what is Jess right about? Does it smell like cinnamon? Because that's, that's weird. I don't think I ever knew that it smelled like cinnamon. Does it smell like cinnamon? Guys, don't go huffing stays on and then tell your partners that Tashiana told you to huff stays on because I did not, I did not tell you to go huffing stays on. Do not do it. Don't let stays on be the gateway drug. This is a... Oh, you guys totally have me recorded going, go smell your stays on. I didn't really mean that. Like, that was actually not what was supposed to happen. Please don't go around huffing your stays on. That's a bad plan. Okay. Um, yeah, guys, don't go huffing your stays on. It's not good for you. I don't think the manufacturers intended us to be sniffing the ink pad. I'm pretty sure that's not what they intended for us to do with it. So please don't go around sniffing your stays on ink. All right, we're going to do some ombre stamping. We're gonna see if I know how to do ombre stamping. So here's my plan. I'm going to ink the bottom with scattered straw. Guys, cross your fingers. This might actually work really well, or this might be terrible. I've never actually done this before. Um, but I figured this was a big enough stamp that it might work, so we'll see. Uh, just stop huffing the stays on. This is bad for us. All right. So I went in with some scattered straw and I'm gonna overlap it with a little bit of tattered rose. And we will see what we get. All right, guys, cross your fingers, moment of truth. We'll see what happens. And I can't re-stamp this. So whatever I get the first time is what I get. So let's see. <laughs> Almond extract, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I ever got that. I got it like, see, now you guys make me want to buy a stays on just to see if I remember what it smells like. <gasps> you guys, it worked. Oh, ha. okay. It worked. Good. We can cancel. We can like go home from the rest of the live because I guarantee from here, it's probably not going to go well. Everything from here is just going to be me having a meltdown, one meltdown after the other. But this worked. This worked. Oh, I did it wrong. I stamped the flower on the wrong side. Nope, nope, no I didn't. I can still do this. I can still, can I salvage it? I can still salvage it, okay. I just need to score it. I just need to score it. So I wanted to make, 
uh, bro, I did not tell people to get high off of crafting. Stop telling stories. Guys, stop huffing your st your stays on. It is bad for you. It is a questionable life choice. And a stays on cannot be the gateway drug. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer on everything I say from now on. Um, just so I don't get myself in trouble. Just so people don't go, hey, did you know Tashi was telling people to like huff their stays on? Uh, because that will get me in trouble and then I will get canceled and I don't want to do that. So guys, please stop huffing your stays on. We need something new to talk about. <laughs> This was just, this was a questionable conversation choice, I will admit. It is gross, Heba. I agree with you. Everybody else is like, it's the most delicious thing in the world. And I'm like, you guys are confused. All right, so I'm going to die cut this. And this is how you partial die cut, if you guys did not know. Heba's not wrong, Jess. I'm going to go ahead and say that you're wrong. This is how you partial die cut. So I folded, I scored my tag. I'm throwing things on the floor. It's fine. I scored my tag and then I left like the tag is not flat on the die is not flat on the tag and we're going to put it through Gemini Jr. which is right next to me and we're going to see what happens. Um, this this conversation is probably the highlight of my entire life, by the way. Yeah, so my Gemini Jr. lives next to me these days. And it is, putting it next to me is probably the best life choice ever. Because I do so much more die cutting. Because it's not, oh, oh, excuse me, scrapbook.com mint tape. It's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get off the die. All right, perfect. Perfection. So yeah, so my Gemini Jr. lives next to me. Best life choice ever. Here we go. So I have my, there must have been ink on my die. I don't know how that happened. But I have my uh, tag that will open up and I will put my story. I'll write my story in there later. Oh, there's ink on my fingers. That's how it's getting everywhere. Okay, we're gonna have to fix this. How can we fix this? I'm gonna just take a brush. Just make sure there's no extra color on it. Grab a little bit of dried marigold. And we're just gonna go in and ink the edges. There we go. So I just went in with that brush and inked the edges with some dried marigold. And does it hide all the terrible things, all the terrible ink that's on my finger? Nope. But I'm really going to have to go wash my hands at some point. Or I'm just going to keep making a mess and it's just going to get worse and worse. So I probably should just go wash my hands. All right, there we go. What's the difference between mint tape and purple tape? So the difference between mint tape and purple tape uh, crystal is the tack. So I actually have mint and purple tape on my desk. Um, mint tape is a lower tack tape. Oh, guys, also look at what's on my desk. So you want to talk about Tashi made me do it. Heba and Crystal made me do this. And that's why I have this particular tape runner on my desk. Um, so mint tape is a lower tack tape than uh, purple tape. So when you're sticking things like with dyes and you don't want it to like peel up your layout, you can use something that's lower tack. There we go. So that's what that's gonna look like. And the journaling is just going to pop out. And then I have this piece with vellum. This is not the good one. Where is the good one? Where is the good one? Guys, we stamped this sentiment like eight times. Where is the one that I'm using? Okay. This is a problem because I know we had one that was viable and now I can't find any of them. I can't find it. Mm. All right guys, off camera, I might have to stamp it again. I lost it. All right, that's it, I lost it. Um, I lost it. I lost it, I completely lost it. I don't want to use this one. I could kind of use this one. It is kind of a little bit of an optical illusion because it's it's double stamped. I'm really upset, but it's not on my magnet board. I just looked. It's not in the mini misty. You guys, I literally just checked. See, it's not in here. I took it out. I took it out. I can't find it. Um, the tape runner for lefties is amazing. I hate my ATG because of that. And this tape runner is amazing. And I lost my sentiment. I did. I lost it. It's gone. 
It's not, I will restamp it later. But anyways, here's what, here's what it's gonna look like in my album. This is pretty much, uh, Heba, do not come here. You might have a conniption and it won't be good for any of us. I'm sure Crystal thinking, Crystal's thinking the same thing and she's like, if I were there, Tashi wouldn't be losing the things that she stamped. I, it's officially gone, you guys, it's gone. It's gone. I spent like five, probably 20 minutes stamping a sentiment that I lost. I have lost it. Joshua, it's gone. Okay, whatever, I'll stamp it again. But anyways, you guys, <gasps> Mary, thank you. Oh, that's so kind of you. That's, wow, thank you very much. I appreciate you so much. It's not on my project. Um, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. I'm losing it. Uh, Crystal and Heba, you guys are not allowed in my space. Uh, uh, let me be a mess. I'm like putting my hair up in a bun now because now I'm like ready. I'm like, I'm primed. I'm having a great time. Uh, I've already lost something. We're off to a great start. So anyways, here's what, I might use the double stamped one. I kind of like the double stamped one. It's not the keeper. This one's double stamped. It's the one that um, my Misty moved a tiny bit and then I couldn't like fit it in there anymore. Um, so this isn't the good one. But this one's not terrible. The problem with this one is you can't read the it's beautiful out there sentiment on it. That's the problem. It's okay, guys. I'll stamp it again later um, since I lost it. Cause we, we're not gonna spend like another like half hour trying to figure out how to do that. But anyways, here is the complete, so here's one of the stories that's going into my October Not Quite Daily. It has my fall rainbow and I'm just gonna do some journaling about uh, trying to remember to take a deep breath. And I'm going to handwrite it, which I almost never do, but I really like the combination of the, Crystal, you think I should keep this double stamped one? All right, fine, I'm gonna staple it. Where's my tiny attacher? Um, I kind of like the mix of the fall rainbow, which is what I'm calling this color combination. You guys have enabled me. You said keep the double stamp one. The double stamp one is staying. I think that looks so good, you guys. I am such a fan of that. All right, so story one, done. Uh, <laughs> okay, there we go. Story one, done. Gonna put a little paper clip. These tiny Felicity Jane paper clips are everything. Gonna put a little paper clip on this just to keep it shut. Oh, I already stapled it on Carol. So if I find it, I'm not gonna tell you guys that I found it because that'll just make me feel bad. If I find it, we're just gonna pretend we never found it. Um, and we're just gonna keep going. We never found it. It never got lost and we never found it and that's okay. All right, so this will get punched and put right in my book. So let's do that right now. Um, and this is what I meant by my October Not Quite Daily being a bunch of sizes. It's just gonna be a bunch of different pages, sizes, things in the page protector, things out of the page protector. And, and what I do, oh, this did not stick. Oh no, that didn't stick. Go back down here where you're supposed to be. What I do, is if I have like pages, there's extra adhesive on that. If I have pages like this, like this is gonna go in here, and there are pages that I have made that are just not in the book. So once I put everything I have made in the book, I'm gonna go through and fill in like these empty places, and I can totally do that. I really like how, that's so pretty. Okay, so there we go. That's in the book. Let's go on to the next idea I had. So the next idea I had is, I'm not even gonna clean my desk. I'm just gonna throw things on the floor. Heba and Crystal are probably weeping in despair. Do not cry for me, ladies, I am okay. I'm just looking to see if I found that sentiment. Look, there's still a stamp in here. I'm never gonna find this stamp again. Can I, guys, hold on. I have to put this stamp away because I'm never gonna find it again and then my life's gonna be over. So we're gonna quickly pop this back in the, collect the package that's looking in. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna throw all this stuff on the floor. Goodbye. Go away. All right. So the next idea I had, I just threw a picture of Minerva on the floor. Wait, Heba, what'd you get? Where'd you go shopping from, Heba? Oh, I, my color cast designs order should be here on Wednesday. My order should be here on Wednesday, and I actually did get a few things for my October album, so I'm really excited. I'm gonna use it in either October or November. Okay, so location. Brooklyn, New York, weather forecast cool, crisp, 
and dry. All right, so we're gonna do some mixed media. So we'll see. I have I I also got one of everything. I just I'm just I'm shameless. So I have these. This is a printable from In a Creative Bubble, and we're gonna do some mixed media. Do I have my mixed media mat? Should I just pull out my glass mat? All right, guys, I'm gonna pull out my glass mat. I hope my light doesn't get too reflective. If the light gets too reflective, let me know. Oh, Ro, thank you. This is upside down. Thanks, Ro. I spent years hating my handwriting, like literally years hating my handwriting. I have actually just started embracing it. Um, it's very like ornate and hard to read. So, all right, I'm trying to fit my media mat now, my mat is going to look crooked. That's because my desk is crooked and I literally have enough of it in frame so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I, so I got everything. Oh, yo, I almost just pulled my computer and threw it on the floor. That would have been bad. That would have been bad. Like literally almost threw my whole computer on the floor. So then live would have been over. Um, what was I saying? I got all the fall stuff also. I was trying to narrow down my options and then it just became very bad. And so I stopped narrowing down my options and I just got one of everything. All right, so I have some Distress watercolor paper. And we're gonna do fun things. I'm gonna grab some different inks. I got Age Mahogany. We're gonna grab some uh, Wild Honey. Some Fossilized Amber. And we're gonna make some leaves. Guys, I'm gonna grab some brown. The world is not ending, it's okay. I have some brown, the world's not ending. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We are literally going to make some leaves. So I'm gonna smash some ink right on my mat, grab my distress sprayer, and I'm just gonna pick up some color. And this is like one of my favorite things to do because there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, and so all my neat freaks are probably like, Tashi, what are you doing? Stop that right now. Um, there's literally no right or wrong way to do this. And that's why I love mixed media so much. Because <laughs> I just like making messes. All right. So I threw down some aged mahogany. And the, we're going to layer some color on this. And then... Oh, uh, see, I don't... So, Ash, I don't clean. I mean, I probably should clean as I go. Um, I'm too busy making messes to clean up. And then after I finish making all the messes, then I'm like sad. And I'm like, who's going to come clean this for me? Because I've made this giant mess and I literally can't find anything. As evidenced by the fact that I lost a whole stamp sentiment that I did. Like I literally lost something. All right. So I just kept, I'm going to put some wild honey over this. And this is not unlike mono printing. This is not unlike mono printing in that you don't know what you're going to get until you lift up the paper. So I am literally just bouncing this in the ink and hoping that it's not terrible. Now, so I'm going to layer like colors. I'm going to layer colors that are um, next to, wait, how about what's your good idea? What's your good idea? Oh, I have alarms too. I mean, I've shared some of my alarms in my stories. I set an alarm every time Allie's gonna have a crazy release because I just know it's gonna sell out. Um, so I always have an alarm. I set an alarm for Jessica's release because she's my lobster and I love her and I have to have everything she makes. Um, yeah, I have alarms. They're very, they come in very handy. What was I saying? Oh, so I'm doing this with colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. If you do things with colors that are not next to each other on the color wheel, then you do... You do want to make sure you dry your colors in between. I'm not drying because I'm putting red on top of yellow on top of orange. So I'm okay without drying. But you do want to make sure if you're... <gasps> oh, I just got yellow on my journaling. All right. Probably should put my journaling somewhere where I will not get ink on it. I'm going to put it over there. Guys, remind me that I put my journaling away. Because I'm going to come back in like five seconds and go, where's my journaling? Um... So you can do this one of two ways. You can do this on a mat, a media mat like I am. I'm gonna go really light-handed with the brown because I don't want this to end up looking super brown and super muddy. And I think actually I'm gonna go in and put some more aged mahogany on top. 
And then after we do these panels, we're gonna dry them and we're gonna die cut. We're gonna die cut some leaves. All right, I think I'm gonna put some more aged mahogany. And so yeah, that's what I do with my ink. So this is why I like the oxides uh, because you get so many uses out of them. And because they're water reactive pigments, you can do so many things. I wish, I should have brought my gold watercolor. I have gold watercolor somewhere and I wish I knew where it was so I could put like a uh, flex of gold on this. I think gold flex would be really pretty. All right, what color is this missing? What color should I put on this? I totally wanna to put another color on this. Not brown, mm, purple. We're gonna put some seedless preserves and this might go really well or this might be terrible. I might like this or I might also really regret it. So let's see. Never mind, I really like the purple. Okay, I like the purple. All right, there we go. So that's that. That's this one done. And I'm gonna do some with greens. And then we're gonna die cut some leaves out of these. And then we're gonna make a page. All right. You, I have vintage photo on my desk, Ashley. And I thought, I knew if anybody called me out about using vintage photo, it would be you. And I was right. All right, so here we go. So here are the more warm toned ones I did. I'm gonna do some with greens and blues. So I got pine needles, crushed olive. We'll do stormy sky. And chip sapphire, since we were just talking about chip sapphire. All right. So same thing. I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna do pine needles first. So I don't know if there's like a right or wrong way as far as layering colors go. What are you guys talking about over there? The desert. You guys should have a Mr. Tashi like I do. Mr. Tashi does my shopping when I'm at work. That's how I got my December daily stuff. So you guys need a Mr. Tashi in your lives. The downside to having a Mr. Tashi is then Mr. Tashi now knows how much money I'm spending on craft supplies. And if that's something <laughs> that might be a deal breaker, then don't do that. But um, yeah, Joshua did my shopping for me for December Daily, and that is how I got what I wanted. Because otherwise, with how fast some of the stuff went, I totally would have missed out. All right, we're gonna do some greens and blues. Uh, what? Wait, wait, oh, by this thing? This is not, a, oh, April, I did not come up with this. This is not something I've come up with. I've seen multiple people do this. Um, it's a, just a really easy way to make backgrounds and then you can do whatever you want with them. Like you can stamp on this if you wanted to. You could, we were gonna die cut also. You just have to be willing to get ink everywhere. Look at my hands. Um, yeah, so you can stamp, you can die cut, you can do whatever you want while you, once you have a background. And it's just like a really easy way to make a mess. Like I'm literally just putting ink all over my desk and just causing all sorts of chaos and seeing what happens. <laughs> and it's, it's very similar to mono printing. So if you wanna do like jelly plating and you don't know if you're ready for the artistic freedom, get a mat, put it on your desk, throw some ink down and see what happens. See like how you handle not being able to see what happens next. Also, when I put my hair up in a ponytail, that's how you know I mean business. I'm looking at my hair up in a bun. That's literally how you know I mean business. I'm like, my hair's up, because I'm like, I gotta get to work, like I gotta pay attention. All right, so there we go. So there are those blues and greens. I might hit this with my heat tool, because the these colors are mixing a little bit too much, and I'm not getting the layering I want, so I might actually hit these with my heat tool real quick. Let's see. So I do want, a look. Do I want more blue on this? I don't know if I want more blue. Let's see, or add some chip sapphire. Also, now I have, <sighs> yes. So the thing about this, April, is you can't see it while it's happening. Like, you kind of just have to trust the process, right? Like, you're like, trust the process. And if you hate the process, then you can cut it up into smaller bits and pieces. That's the good thing about something like this, is you're not stuck with, complete pieces like you can die cut this you can cut it up into backgrounds this is also a really cool thing to do in an art journal you make like tags like this you make tags and then you cut it up into backgrounds or you can die cut letters or whatever and then you do stuff 
I'm a big fan of like quick, messy mediums like this. Like this is my particular art style. I do know it's not for everyone. Um, I was listening to Heba during her live yesterday and she was talking about how like everything she makes is simple and over embellishing. And I was like, Heba's totally talking about me right now because everything Heba does, I'm like the complete opposite of um, my aesthetic is the complete opposite. So I'm sure she like twitches when she watches me. She's like, Tashi, put down the embellishments. You don't need eight more stickers. Put it down. It is super fun, Heather. It's super fun. Um, all right, so I have my four backgrounds. We're gonna cut some leaves out of this. Yeah, but I'm sure Heather's like, Tashi, put those stickers down. You don't need five more Distress Oxide colors. You have everything else you need. Put it down. And she's probably right. That doesn't stop me from trying. All right, so let's dry this. Oh, Tiffany, thank you. I am having an amazing day. Uh, my work day was not terrible. And any day I don't have a terrible work day is a good day. Um, so I didn't have a terrible work day. And then I came home and I get to hang out with all of you. Mr. Tashi will have to help me clean up. Because my desk is, he's, he's shaking his head no. But by shaking his head no, he really means yes. Um, because I have inks everywhere and I don't know how I'm going to make sense of this. All right, so we're going to quickly hit this with our heat tool and then we're going to cut out some leaves and we're going to do fun things. So I have that honey bee uh, leaf set that I am dying to use. So we're going to cut some of those out. And then I have some lawn fawn leaf dies, those stitch leaf dies that I think might be really fun. So we're going to do some die cutting really quick. And I'm just going to dry these. Now, the good thing about the Gemini is I've cut a crazy number of mediums with this thing. And it has not failed me yet. Like, I've also cut felt. I've cut, like, everything with my Gemini Junior. And it's just, it, ha it holds up really well. So, my, my cutting plate, though, is sad. My cutting plate's probably like, Tashi, give me a break. All right. So, we're going to cut some. These are the Honey Bee, uh, what is this called? Honey Bee... Maple leaf. It's the watercolor. It is distressed watercolor paper. Um, it is like the brightest white. I have a number of different watercolor papers. I have watercolor papers um, that are like fine art papers. But this paper is the brightest white paper I've tried. So I use this one if I want like really true color. Um, I don't know if it's like cold pressed, so that's not something that I can answer. If that, I hope that helps. All right, so we're gonna die cut some leaves and this won't take very long, so. And then after we die cut the leaves, we're gonna make a page. And I have a photo, ah, see, so here's my photo. I picked a dead leaf off the ground on my way home the other day. We don't get like really nice fall foliage here. Can we talk about this leaf, you guys? Look at this leaf! Um, we don't get really nice, like, fall foliage here in the city. It's, it's, it's a very sad thing. Um, I want to cut another leaf, but I don't know if I have enough paper to cut another leaf. But I really want to cut another leaf. This is making me sad that I'm only going to get one leaf out of this background. Okay, whatever. I might only get one leaf. Um, yeah, so we don't get, like, the really nice fall foliage here. So I found a leaf on the ground that had changed color. This leaf is just the most, I'm so stuck on this leaf. It is very smooth, Ro. It's, it's a really nice watercolor paper. It's really nice. Um, it's hot press. It is smooth. All right, so there we go. I'm going to pop out these leaves. We're, we're not going to talk about the state of my fingers. All right, I'm just going to pop these leaves out here, and then you guys will ooh and ah with me, and maybe I might make something, or maybe I might just be like, these leaves are the most... Look at these leaves. I'm just, I can't. I mean, I know you guys can see my face and I'm just, <sighs> you know when you have an idea in your head and you're like, I'm gonna attempt this thing and this might happen. It is hot press, bro. It's hot press. Um, so yeah, you know when you have, I don't know if this ever happens to anybody when you have these ideas and you're like, I'm gonna attempt this thing and it might work, but it also might be terrible. This worked. This worked really well. All right. 
So I got my leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of the big leaves out of this green one. Now I probably should, I probably should stick this down because if this moves and I get a double cut, I'm just gonna cry. So I am gonna stick this down. And then I'm gonna cut some of the leaves out of the burgundy. And we're gonna quickly feed this back through my die cutting machine. And aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> like this worked out so well. So you see guys, mixed media doesn't have to be terrifying. And this is what I meant about making those backgrounds is looking at those backgrounds. You guys are probably like, Tashiana has lost her mind. Somebody come get her. And now I have these really fun leaves. Look at this green one. Yep, okay, that works. Yeah, so making these backgrounds, people are probably, you guys are probably like, Tashi's freaking out. She has no idea, but she's like lost the plot. Someone come save her. And it worked out, all right. And I just have a craft pick that I'm using to pop the leaves. Wait, what? How about, what is this tool? Because I'm clearly struggling. What is this tool? I have to look it up. How does it work? I have to see, okay, I have to see how that works. I didn't know that they had a thing. All right, so I have all these little leaves. We're going to, uh, oh shucks, I just lost that. Can you just come out? On the bright side, this, this isn't an intricate die, so it's just a matter of popping the leaves out. These worked out so well, and I like the little pops of like yellow and orange mixed in with the, like they look like fall leaves. I really like how this went. I really like that. I really like that. And I'm also gonna save these because there's plenty of space to cut more leaves out. So I'm gonna save them and put that back in my uh, album box. And this, this is the Lawn Fawn Stitch die. I did go ahead and link all the dies that I was planning on using in the description box. So if I could find them, everything that I could find was linked in the description box if you guys are wondering. All right, let's keep going. And, uh, okay, I'm not putting that back in this packaging. It's gonna take too long. All right, so here's my journaling, which I totally got some yellow ink on. And I'm like, should I print it over? I don't think I'm gonna print it over. I'm trying to decide if I should print it over because I got yellow ink on it. But I also wanna finish the page. I'm not gonna print it over. And I'm just gonna go with it. I want, uh, should I print this? I can't print it over because I'm on my computer. Hold on, let's see if I can print it over without disturbing Ecamm, you guys. Let's cross our fingers um, and see if I can print this without causing a ruckus. Because I really don't like that yellow splotch. Okay, I'm still live, so I guess I didn't cause anything to break. All right, I'm printing it again, wonderful. I really don't like that, that yellow splotch in the middle. It's bothering me a lot, so I'm printing it again. Um, how big do I need this paper? This is the upside to, oh, how about you think I should leave it? Okay, how about thinks I should leave it? All right, I will leave it, I will not print it again. Okay, I'll leave it. Oh, Mary, thank you! Okay, how about add more splatter? That's what I'll do, I'll add more splatter. That's a good idea. Mary, thank you. Um, I'm glad that the adventure was worth it. I'm glad that the adventure was worth it, even though you were doubtful. I, I will be honest, there are some days I go on adventures and I'm like, Tashiana, this is not gonna work out. And then they work out. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I honestly think sometimes though, and you guys might get this from like my December daily pages, I think the adventure is half the fun. Personally, I like going on the adventure. Um, I have no idea if the adventures I go on will succeed sometimes. All right, so what do I wanna do with actually embellishing this now? Cause I have these super, But if we're in the upper, you want me to go, oh, uh, hold on, let me see if I can move it. I don't know if I can move it while I'm live. Uh, can I move it? I'm sorry. Um, Lou, that is a valid point. I don't know if I can move it while I'm live though, and I'm worried that, uh, hold on. 
All right, I moved it. Let me know if it moves. We'll see, because there's a 30 second delay between Ecamm and what you guys see. So I moved it and we will see if it moves for you guys as well. So that's what we'll do. But I did move it, so hopefully it moves. Ah, it moved, okay, there we go. Um, so Lou, let me know if, or anybody, let me know if that's better having it be in the top left, because I'm perfectly okay with it being in the top left. Printer, hush, hush printer, hush, hush. Okay, hush. Um, much better. Wait, why didn't anybody tell me you wanted me to move? I could have happily moved the thing before. Ah, you see? Thanks for speaking up. Thanks for speaking up. Okay, good. I want this to be a good experience for everybody. So whatever I have to do to make it a good experience, if it was just as simple as moving the little Tashi in the box, I could do that. So there we go. So I wanted this to look like a cascade of fallen leaves. And then I was just gonna do like a little like leaf clusters around my, um, my photo with the two big leaves and then have more leaves be falling kind of like that so it was gonna be like that and then I was gonna do a stamp I'm trying to decide and then I was gonna put something on this side some pattern paper on this side have some more leaves on this side and stamp a sentiment oh see okay guys I'm so glad that uh, Lou spoke up um hold on okay yeah wait Lou is that I, re I feel like there's someone who tells me that they use their husband's account and I, I'm just, I'm wondering if it's you. If it's you, let me know. And if it is you, if it's not, but I, there's someone who told me they use their, hus their husband's account and she tells me what her name is and I forget all the time and I'm doing better with names because I remember that Crystal's name was Crystal today. I am getting better. I want a little bit of pattern paper. That's not right. Uh, so die cutting, Dawn, is like, die cutting is a bit of a rabbit hole in that once you go down, it is very hard to come out. Um, I wasn't always into die cutting machines. I didn't think there was room for die cutting in my particular, none of these papers match. I don't think I'm going to use this pattern, this paper pad, none of these papers match. Um, I didn't think that there was room for die cutting in my particular crafting. None of these match. Um, I'm just going to keep flipping through this and see if I can find paper. Hold on, Cindy. I am using the Kokuyo tape runner. It's the one that, uh, Heba and Crystal use now. I used to use, this is the Simple Stories Cozy Days. I'm just trying to find a paper pad that I like, a uh, paper that I like that matches the green and the burgundy without being super clashy. And I don't think I like any of these. Um, yeah, it's Simple Stories Cozy Days. Um, what was I saying? I used to use an ATG. I don't think I like any of these. I used to use an ATG. Um, and I struggle with my ATG because it's not designed for left-handed people. This Kokuyo tape runner that I'm, should I just go with the plaid? I don't know if any of these papers, somebody help me with this. I don't think I like any of these papers. Um, what about the, that's too pink. Oh, this is going to be hard. This is really hard. I think with the color scheme I chose, I think the color scheme I chose is making it really hard for me to pick papers that match. Um, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. I don't know what I was saying. It probably wasn't important since I forgot that fast. But I don't remember what I was saying. This is the thing about going live with me is like I literally forget what I was saying like instantly. Like as I'm talking, I forget what I'm saying. Um, cause I got distracted trying to find paper. I really need to find a paper. I might just go with the black and white plaid. Cause it's going to go over. Okay guys, help me. The plaid, you think the black and white plaid works? Cause otherwise I'm just going to stare at this paper pad. The yellow buffalo check. Where was, oh, you think. The... Actually, that's not a bad idea. I like that. And there's a little bit of yellow on my journaling. So I might just go back and add more yellow splatter. That's a good idea. All right. So I'm gonna do something that might terrify you guys, and it's okay, it's okay. I do this for a living, it's okay. 
And on the bright side, I print my journaling at home. So if this doesn't work, I want this to look torn. So if this doesn't work, I can just print it again. Yeah, this is the yellow buffalo check. I think it looks good because there's yellow splatter on my journaling. And we're gonna distress this a little bit, so I think it'll work. And I like distressing, and I think with all the mixed media, it's going to look okay. So we're gonna go for it. So I just jacked up the edge, the plain black. So you don't, I, th I think the yellow buffalo check works. Or you think, let's look at the black flag. Let's see, let's see. I will pull it out, we'll see. So this is the black, this is what the black buffalo check looks like. Actually, you guys might be right. I'm gonna go with that. I like that more. All right, I'm not picking, I'm not changing my paper again. So we're gonna have to go with this choice. Otherwise I'm gonna keep changing paper forever and ever and then I will get nowhere. All right, so let's line this up like that. And we're gonna cut this down to 6.75 which is the size of a page outside of the page protector. That, no, that's too big. So we're not gonna do it 6.75. We'll just do five inches. We'll do five inches. We'll do five inches. Um, and then I want to do a torn bit of it. Oh my, I don't, I cannot live without my, um, my Tim Holtz distressing tool, I use it on everything, literally everything. Everything I make, the distressing tool comes out. I literally, I can't live without it. It's just, it's one of my default things um, because I'm always making messes. I'm always making messes. So yeah, can't live without mine. It was one of those things that I, like, you know when you have these tools and you're like, I don't need that thing, and then you get it and you're like, how on earth did I survive without one? That's how I feel about it. Like I was like, I don't need a tool designed just for distressing paper. Like I can do that without like a tool. Um, and then I got it and I was like, oh, this is literally the most magical thing on the planet. All right, so we're gonna distress this. Obviously, we're distressing it. Um, <laughs> so I'm literally just tearing up this black buffalo check paper and I'm putting it in three places and that is the easiest way to repeat a design element is to put it in a trio of places. Because if you put it in a trio of places, we're gonna put a little bit less on this side. When you put it in a trio of places, you get a visual triangle. There we go. And I really wanted to add some pattern to this. So I put my pages next to each other so I could cross them. And I wanna put this one a little bit further over. And you can still see my, the, quite, the other thing is like, I wanna make sure I can still read the journaling. And there's not like, you know, story breaking journaling here. I just talked about how I found the leaf and the leaf made me think of fall magic because we don't get foliage here. So like everyone's sharing their like pumpkin patches and their trips with the fall leaves and we don't really get foliage in the city. I just, I don't know if it's just cause there's not enough trees. I don't know what it is but there's not as much foliage here for us. So when I found this sad, and it's a sad leaf, it's not even like it's a pretty leaf, it's a sad leaf, but I found the sad leaf and the sad leaf made me a lot less sad. And that's literally what my journaling is about. It's like I found the sad leaf, sad leaf made me less sad. And that's the story. And that's what I wanted for this, this particular little book. Like I wanted it to hold the small stories like finding sad leaf and sad leaf making me less sad. And then because I waste nothing, I just put a little bit of that scrap of buffalo check behind my leaf papers. And we're just going to finish up this layout. All right, so this came together really quickly once we made our leaves. The leaves were the hardest part. I love what that buffalo check did, you guys. You guys were so right about this being the pattern. I love this so much. Okay. You guys were right about this black and white. You guys were totally right. This was this was the move. The black and white was the move. And then I'm gonna just like put some leaves down here. 
to just repeat that leaf motif. And then that's going to be this one done. And this is what I meant about batch processing mine is I was just going to just do it like this, like get a few stories and then a day that I had a few stories to tell, just sit down and work on it. This leaf's too big. I need a smaller leaf. No, not this color. Where I need another leaf. Just what? I could do this one. Oh, never mind. I'll do it like this. All right. Sorry. I'm just, I'm fiddling with leaves. It's one of those things that I know how I want it to look. And I'm just making sure that it looks that way. Okay. How about thank you so much? That's just your thank you. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Um, I'm just, I'm honestly only doing an October album because you and Crystal are doing it. And I just, I, I have, I have serious FOMO and I didn't want to be left out. Um, and then after I sat around and I thought about it a little bit longer, I thought it would be the perfect project for me. And I'm so glad that you guys like sold me on it because I think I really did. I think I really just needed, um, a way to, oh, bye, Etienne. Have a great night. Say hi to the girls for me. Um, I think I just really need uh, a way to, to kind of just wrestle with the season as it comes. And this, this little album I think is going to be perfect for that. So we're going to do something like the, the row. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so you guys, if you guys don't understand the joke, we get coffee delivered to my job. Um, bro, that made me laugh out loud. Thank you. If you couldn't tell, that literally made my day. Um, we get coffee delivered all the time at my job at work. And my coffee cups almost always say Carmen on them because we take turns getting the coffee order. And Carmen does it a lot. Um, and so my coffee order says Carmen a lot just because she's the one that orders it. And Instagram finds that so interesting that my coffee order says Carmen as often as it does. Um... And that is why that made me laugh, like literally laugh out loud. That was, that was pretty funny. Ro, that was brilliant. Thank you. Man, I needed that laugh. That was great. Um, I don't, so I matted mine with black and white paper. Um, and I think that will, yeah, I think that's probably going to be all the matting that I'm going to do. I don't use black as much as Oh, you guys, no, not tonight, please. Thank you, Cindy, but not tonight. My Lord, thank you. Um, I don't use black very often in my crafting. Uh, so I, I use black and white. So I, that's why I use, I think the black buffalo check was a good addition because um, it helps all the colors pop a little bit better. All right, what I need to stop doing is I need to stop fiddling with these clusters and I need to just start thinking, sticking things down because I'm going to fiddle with them forever. And I'm just going to keep faffing about with them. So gonna stop faffing just start sticking things down I really like the way these leaves came out they were totally an experiment I mean I sounded pretty confident but you guys half the time I sound confident I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm making it up as I go so if I sound confident I'm literally winging it and I'm trying to sell you guys on the thing that I think I'm doing and sometimes I'm successful and sometimes I'm sure you guys are like, Tashi has no idea what she's doing. She's totally making this up as like she goes. And you guys would not be incorrect. Like I totally make it up as I go 90% of the time. Ah, April, I'm so glad you're liking it. I'm actually a really big fan. I totally changed my leaf cluster as I'm doing it. Did you guys see that? Like this is literally like as I'm putting it together, I'm like, I don't think I like this. I'm going to do something else. And so I totally changed my leaf cluster as I was making it. Uh, faffing. I don't, I don't, that's not an American word, Crystal. Like I know for sure faffing is not an American word and I think it's British. I really think it's British because I watch a lot of the great British bake the, Joshua, what's the name of that British baking show? Is it the British baking show? Okay. So I watched a terrible amount of the British baking show and I think that's where I got that word. Um, but I could be wrong, but faffing Faffing is totally, you're right, Crystal, faffing's totally not an American word. And I think that's why I enjoy using it so much because it's such a strange word. It's like, who says this thing? You know what I want? Do I want more leaves? Should I just cut more leaves? I have more paper. I might cut more leaves. Oh, but you know what else? I have? Where are the small leaves? Falafel, can you help me? Falafel. I have a small leaf die. 
It looks like this one. Sorry guys, I'm looking for another leaf dye. It looks like this one. It looks like this one, but it's the small one. Can you help me find it? Guys, BRB. Where do I it's in here somewhere, my love. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's in here. It's in here. Okay. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Okay, Joshua's gonna look for my small leaf dye, because uh, I really want it. I want a few I want a few more smaller leaves. I don't want like as many chunky leaves. I just want a few more small leaves. And I think that's gonna Haha! Where'd you find it? This is not it. It looks like this. No, babe, it looks like this. But small. It says small leaf dies. Okay, Josh was not doing a very good job at finding the leaves. Oh well, you know, Kate, I haven't taken apart that die. And that's going to take me forever. And I also like the stitched leaves. And i that's what I'm looking for, Heather. I'm looking for leaves with more yellow. Um, and I also like the stitched leaves. And so I don't want to mix shapes. And I, I have, like, I bought the large and the small one to this. And I lost the small. Babe, it's not in there. All right. Joshua says I lost it. So whatever. We'll see. I do want some more leaves. Did you find it? Yes, he found them. Okay. See, I knew I had them. I just had no idea where they were. Uh, faffing and conniption. Yeah, those are these are actually the words I use in real life. It's literally just me having a meltdown all the time. So yes, faffing and having a conniption. Um, but Heather, you were right. I do want some leaves with some more yellow in them, which is why I want to cut some more. Because I want to cut from right here. I think this this section right here would be great. All right, perfect. So, and the beautiful part of having my Gemini on my desk all the time is I can, hey, Elizabeth, I didn't realize you were here. How are you? Happy Monday. Um, the beautiful part of having my Gemini on my desk all the time is I can do things like this. Like I can just die cut things without having to like go look for my die cutting machine. All right, there we go. Okay, these leaves have a lot more yellow in them. And so these are at a bit smaller scale than the other wait where are the leaves okay these are a bit smaller scale than the other ones i was using oh uh, yeah see there's that poppy yellow mr tashi is the best heather i am so lucky um also he puts up with my nonsense like it's li he's literally playing a video game and i'm like hey hey can you can you help me find my leaf dies like what then he's probably like why do i have to help you find your leaf dies but he's also endlessly patient Joshua, they say thank you. He says no problem. Well, you guys can hear him, but he said no problem. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, so this the lawn font, I got these on um, Amazon. I got these on Amazon, actually. I didn't buy them from, like, a traditional crafting store. I found them on Amazon, and they had a set of the large and the small together. So I snatched them up uh, because I figured I would like them. And I was correct. I did. I do, in fact, like them. I, I'm putting too many leaves over here, and I'm covering the journaling. So I'm going to stop doing that right now. All right. I like that. I'm going to leave that the way it is. I want it to look like there's leaves falling from the sky. That's why I wanted more leaves, so I could have leaves falling from the sky. Lawn Fawn is, in fact, so I, this Gemini Junior is probably the best and the worst thing to ever happen to me. Because now that I can die cut successfully, I want dyes. Like, I never wanted dyes. Dyes were never a thing I saw myself hoarding. And Kate, you're probably going to get a kick out of this. But I was actually just talking to Joshua last night about making Christmas cards. And I was like, do you think I should make Christmas cards this year? And who am I? Like, who am I? So even me thinking about making Christmas cards. I don't make cards. It's wild. I don't make cards. So, uh, so I might actually be making Christmas cards this year. So we'll see how that goes. So I think what I might do right here is have one get cut off a little bit. I think that's going to, I think that's part of why my illusion of the falling leaves is struggling because I need to have leaves interacting with the edges of the paper. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some leaves interacting with the edges. Ashley, I knew you were going to say yes to that. Um, I don't know if I will be making Christmas cards. I might give it a try. We will see. I, I mean, I'm, I would need like some stamps and some dies. 
I have plenty of paper. I have plenty of ink. I have plenty of stencils. I don't have like traditional sentiments. So I think that would be like what I would need. Um, is to get like a few Merry Christmas like sentiment dies. Oh, you guys, look at how fun. See, just putting the leaves that interact with the edges of the page. You guys see how that like told the story of the leaves falling so much better than what I was doing before. Like I literally just needed leaves interacting with the edges of the page. Um, I don't, I wouldn't use traditional lawn fawn dyes because lawn fawn dyes I think require a lot of coloring and I don't know if my alcohol ink coloring skills are there. Um, but I do like shapes. Like I like, I have a lot of flowers. I have a lot of trees. I like shaped things. And I think that's why I was attracted to these leaves because of the shape. All right. So there we go. I think that looks super good. It needs like maybe a stamped, uh, stamped thing, like a stamped label. I think that's all, all I would put on it is a stamped label. And then that one, this one's also done. Yeah, see, Heather, I feel the same way. Like, literally just going in and cutting the edges of those leaves. I kept trying to figure out how can I sell this story about the leaves falling from the sky, and all I needed to do is have the leaves interact with the edges of the page. I think that's something that, like, it's totally a neglected design, having things interact with the edges of the page. Um, but I think it could honestly make or break something just doing that. So literally by just having... A few leaves, like one leaf off the top. Uh oh. One leaf off the top, one leaf off the bottom. I think it just totally sold that story I was telling. All right. Hey, you guys, I am actually, I am okay. I am really a fan of this. All right. So I have this stamp from Feed Your Craft, and I was thinking about stamping like this little banner and putting it here. So, do I stamp it on white? I guess I stamp it on white. I guess I stamp it on white. Let me get a scrap of cardstock. I have so much paper on the floor. Replace the green blue for the redder one. This one? Like that? Okay. I will do that. Millie, I will take your advice. Uh-huh. Hey, you were right. That looks, actually, that does, wow, that looks so good. Millie, you were so right. Okay, so I am I was thinking about just stamping the date like that. This is a Feed Your Craft stamp set. This is, this is what? Ah, date documented. I was like, I know there's a date on this somewhere. It's date documented. Uh, Millie, that was such a good idea, switching it out for that color. Um... I totally didn't think about that. I'm really glad I die cut those extra leaves because I think they were everything I needed. All right, where is my ink? Oh, oh, that's why. Oh, I, I knew I had something else. I had these. I did some print and cut. Okay, see, I have too much stuff on my desk. Um, I did some print and cut send things to include on this layout, and then I forgot about them. No, this one. Autumn adventuring, maybe, maybe. Thankful for this, maybe, maybe that also. Um, I could put a banner and then put the thankful for this on top of it. I will try not to put eight levels of foam tape on this, but I make no promises because I really enjoy foam tape. Um, oh, I could put this one down there. This is a total delight. I'm doing that. I like that so much. All right, never mind. We're putting down these everyday, these in a creative bubble uh, printables. And I print and cut these using my silhouette. And I'm very glad that I remembered I had these because I print and cut them for this live. And then I totally was forgetting to use them. In typical Tashi fashion, if things are not in front of me, I just pretend I don't have them. So that's how that went. All right. So I have this leaf. Um, I just figured out, Kate, you're probably going to find this pretty funny. Or maybe not funny at all, actually. I literally just figured out print and cut today. 
I, I have struggled with print and cut for ever. I see now I don't think I'm gonna stamp this date. I don't think I'm gonna stamp. And I really wanted to stamp because I, I like being like Heba and I like stamping. But I don't think I'm gonna stamp. I could put the date, but then I have to cut this out. All right, I think I'm gonna stamp the date, but with the small banner, so we'll see. Uh, we will see how this goes. What are you guys talking about? Cards? Man, cards. I, there are plenty of people who are constantly trying to convince me to make cards. I will not out them, Ashley. Um, I will not use words, Kate. I will not use names, Elizabeth. But people are constantly trying to convince me to make cards. And I think the reason I have so much trouble with card making is I don't know. Like, I want, I want to make cards like other people. And I really just need to make cards like myself. But I don't know how making cards, like I don't know what that means, making cards like myself, right? Because I don't make cards. So I want to make cards like Jennifer McGuire. And I want to make cards like Christina Warner. But then that's not my style. And then I don't make cards. So that's, that's where I get stuck. Like literally these are the conversations I have with myself. Um, and so I really do need to figure out how to make cards like me and what that means. I have a small acrylic block somewhere. There it is. I just don't know what that means, making cards like me. Vertically on the white space. Vertically. Oh, I would not stamp it directly on that. Um, I am not that brave, Christine. There are limits to my madness. And stamping directly on this when I just spent an hour on this page. Ooh, that is not it, my love. Because if, if I hate it, <laughs> if I drop my block or something, I will literally cry. And so I will rather stamp on a bit of scrap paper and put a label. That's what I'm leading towards because if that fails. Um, ooh, you want to see. Well, see, Elizabeth, I don't know what my style is. That's the problem. I know my style when it comes to scrapbooking. I know my style when it comes to memory keeping. I don't know if I have a style when it comes to cards. So... It's hard to say be happy with your style when you don't know what your style is. What I have to do is experiment. So I, but the last time I tried to make a card, it took six, it took six hours. It took three hours and I cried and I cut myself and I cried. And then I decided that card making was just not for me. I was like, no, not this. Um, yeah, so I just don't know what my style is. I don't know if I have one. Um, yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, because I can crank out a scrapbook layout like nobody's business. But I don't know if that doesn't extend to cards. So I don't know what my card style is. I need to just try a bunch of things on. I mean, that's how I figured out how to scrapbook, right? Like, I figured out how to scrapbook by trying a bunch of things on and seeing what fit. So that's what I have to do when it comes to card making, is literally just try a bunch of things on um, and see what fits. So that's what I have to do. I just have to try things on. That's why I keep uh, playing with embossing powder because I really want to be able to heat emboss when I start making cards. Um, and my embossing is getting better. Is it great? No. Is it better? Yes. And I will take better because I wasn't embossing at all before. All right, so I stamped the date, which was October 6th. That's the date I took this picture on this little banner. And we're going to just uh, make some little clusters and we're going to call this um, you know what, Teresa, that's a great idea. That would be a really good card. So the pro so here's the thing. If I start making cards, I'm probably going to need, like, sentiments. Like, what do you put on a card, right? Like, you need some sort of stamp or something. How do you finish a card? And that's the problem. That's the problem I'm having is how do I finish cards? Because then I feel like I need to buy stuff to finish the cards. Um, and I don't need to buy stuff. I don't need to buy stuff. That's enough. Uh, but then I'm like, don't I need a die that says thank you? Or don't I need a stamp that says thank you? Like, what do you finish the card with? That's the problem I'm having. Because I don't have that stuff. Um, I have, like, Allie Edwards stamps. And I have Carrie Bradford stamps. But I don't think those are, like, card stamps. And then, and I know myself, the second I start buying card making supplies, all hell's going to break loose. And I'm going to have, like, no money. So, so I keep trying to talk myself out of it because it sounds like card making is an expensive hobby. And scrapbooking is already an expensive... Oh, bye, Steph. Have a great night. Scrapbooking is already an expensive hobby. 
So I'm like, do I need another? All right, you guys, that's it. That's this done. That's done. I like this so much. All right. What do you guys think? I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Oh, yay, April. I'm so glad you liked it. All right, so that's it. That's it done. I think as far as like clean and simple goes, I think it's pretty clean. Heba, would you consider this a clean layout? I'm very, I'm very interested. Um, I think this is pretty clean as far as like what I make goes. Um, so I think this is pretty clean. Um, and it's pretty, the, the thing about like the stuff that I'm putting in this book, I think is pretty easy to recreate. I also think it's pretty easy to translate for like, uh, other projects like you could do this any other time of the year it doesn't have to be in a fall album um it doesn't have to be in a fall album now this is not something I would do in like oh shucks I just like I, I put I put my places in them this I punch holes right in my in my die cuts this is not something I would typically do in December daily because my December daily albums are not very scrapbooky um but if I was making like a scrapbook mini album like I am right now, this is totally a layout I would include. All right, so we're gonna pop this right in here. And then like I said, I'm gonna, I have some pages that I made already that are just not in this album that I have to just go back and add in here. So that'll help me make sense of what's in here, how I wanna glue it together, how I want things to line up. Um, but there we go. So I made that and I made this and I think I have time for one more because the last thing I was gonna make is really easy. All right, so the last thing I was gonna make was a five by eight layout with a picture of Minerva. Okay, so I had a picture of Minnie. There she is. So, okay, so the last thing I wanted to make was a five by eight layout and this is gonna be the last thing for the night. Um, this is not gonna be a double page spread. This is gonna be a quick single page spread. And it's just documenting my favorite girl. She came over yesterday and decided she wanted to have a nap next to me. And she rarely does that. She used to do it so much more when she was younger. She rarely does that. So I was super excited that she decided she wanted to come over and have a nap. Um, and so, sorry, very important text from my sister. Just gonna see what she wants. Um, I was super excited that she came over and decided she wanted to have a nap. And so we had a little bit of cuddle time and it was great. And I have this picture. So we're gonna quickly scrap, um, quickly scrap this photo of Minnie. And I have, uh, babe, babe, can you do me a favor? My leaf stencil's in the bathroom. Can you get it for me, please? Please, please, please. Stop doing that. Okay, Mr. Tashi's getting me a stencil. <laughs> Cause I left my stencil in the bathroom. Um, so we're going to just do, we're going to keep this really easy. This one, this is probably going to take like, thank you. Thank you, my love. Um, this is probably going to take like 10 minutes. When I tell you this is the easiest thing we're making all night, this is literally going to take like 10 minutes. We're going to do a tiny bit of ink blending. We're going to put mini on top of this. This also, having this microfiber cloth has just been the best thing because I literally just rub the excess ink off. All right, we're gonna do some blending. What, I mean, I already have a million inks out on my desk. I'm not gonna pull out any more. I'm just gonna use what I have on my desk. So I already have a million inks out. And if I take out a single extra ink, my desk might explode. Where is Tattered Rose? Uh, where's Tattered Rose? Joshua, I can't find Tattered Rose. I know I have it. I used it. Oh, okay, I'm taking out another ink because I don't know where Tattered Rose is, so we'll just take out another one. All right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is Minerva. She's my favorite. Um, where's Tattered Rose? Minnie, I like to say Minnie's the good cat because Tori hates me and she's evil. Um, I found it. There we go. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending with this stencil. I'm not gonna pull out 
You know what? Famous last words. That's not true. I was going to say, I'm not going to pull out my uh, Wendy Becky art station, but I, if I don't do it, I know I'm going to regret doing it, so I'm just going to pull it out. So we're just going to put it back on the, the desk. I know that if I don't pull it, I'm going to hit, I'm going to be sad that I didn't do it. So let's see how many other things I can fit on this desk before the world ends and like I break things. Um, also, you guys, is it better having the the little split screen in the top the top corner? I'm really glad that somebody thought of that because that's not something I would have realized that this is better. So I'm really glad somebody said something. All right, just gonna quickly. Do some ink blending, go down. We're keeping it really fast and loose right now. I'm going into Tattered Rose, into Victorian Velvet, into Seedless Preserves, and we're just gonna put down a giant amount of color. Um, how about you can't come clean up my space? I really can't find anything. Like, I literally, you guys are watching me. Like, this is what scrapbooking for me at home is like. I'm literally putting things down and then going, oh my word, where did I put that thing? I need it. All right. So, we're going to quickly blend these in. And then what I'm doing is I'm going back over the places where the color met. And since uh, Sealess Preserves is such a deep color, I'm just going to go over the edge of it with a, <gasps> never mind. Hold on. Never mind. We might not be doing that because my stencil moved and I don't know if I can put never mind. We're not doing it. My stencil moved and I can't put it back. Oh, you guys. Why did I have a stencil in the bathroom, Carol? Because when I'm done with my lives, I put all my stencils in the bathroom to get washed. Um, and then I forget to put them back. That's why I was in the bathroom, because I was washing them. Uh I use my stencils very regularly, and so I just put them back in the, I just wash them in the sink, and then I leave them in the sink to dry, and then I never put them back. <laughs> and so they just stay in the bathroom. Um, and Mr. Tashi knew exactly where to look for my stencil, because I leave stencils, I leave everything in the bathroom. I leave stencils, I leave paint brushes, literally everything <laughs> lives in the bathroom. Everything's in there all the time. Stencils, paint brushes, everything. Millie, I totally could put it back, but the anxiety wouldn't let me, so I didn't mess with it. All right, so I just put down the same colors across the bottom, and when I, this literally is going to take five minutes. Famous last words. It might not take five minutes. It will take close to five minutes. It will be the shortest thing I've made all night. I can make that promise. Habba can't come here and clean because I won't find anything. And that defeats the purpose. So this is what happens. I take my stencils in the bathroom, I clean them, and they never come back out the bathroom. And then when I'm ready to film, Joshua goes and rescues my stencils from the bathroom. That is literally what happens all the time. All right, so that's what we're looking at right now. I need some paper. Oh, shut up, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out. I want some of this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of this one. Now these are not gonna be the same exact colors because I have that really deep purple in there, but that is okay. Things don't have to match, they just have to go. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Also, by, once this live is over, I'm gonna go have a beer and I'm gonna go scrub my fingers because I'm covered in ink. It is, it's just really sad how much ink is on my hands. So once this live's over, I'm gonna go wash my hands, uh, soak my fingers. I always go to work the day after a live covered in, how about you think the green looks good with the purple for like contrast, is that what you're saying? You think the green, the green with the con. You know, I could get behind it. I don't want to introduce too many colors. Um, what was I saying? This is one canoe to willow. That's what that is. 
It's a one canoe, two willow line. Yeah, so the day after a live, I always go to work with stained fingers because normally when I scrapbook at home, I take breaks and I wash my hands, um, which is not happening right now uh, because I'm too busy trying to keep up. Um, so I'm not washing my hands and taking breaks the way I normally would. And so I go to work the next day and they're all like, what were you doing? And why do your hands look like that? And then I get to explain to everybody that this is what I do on Monday nights. And then they go, people watch you make messes for two hours. And I'm like, actually, they do. It is a thing we do. It's okay. All right, so we're just gonna do some paper matting. Yeah, the willow line is gorgeous. I did not use it enough last fall. So I pulled it back out. And we're just gonna do, so this is something that if you wanted to scale up, you could do six by 12. Um, it's definitely something I would scale up for a six by 12 uh, layout. I don't drink beer, I only drink hard cider. And we have a case of, a case. That makes us sound like alcoholics. Um, we have a six pack of Stella ciders. And I thought about being like Crystal and drinking my cider during the live. Because that's my favorite thing that she does. That she has her grown up beverage uh, while she's streaming. I love that she does that. Um, and I thought about doing that. But with the way I craft, I would spill it. And that would make me sad. Uh, if I spilled it everywhere. So that's the only reason I didn't have it. Because I was like, what if I spill it? And then it gets everywhere. And it gets on my computer, it gets on all my supplies. Babe, where's my, oh, I found it. So that's the only reason I haven't had my adult beverage, but I definitely thought about having it like while we were filming, like just being like Crystal and going for it. Oh, you know what, Heba? You are totally right about that green. That green's really pretty. All right, we gotta find some way to tie it back in though. So. I like this XOXO with this picture of Minerva and maybe this vellum flower. We'll do this vellum flower, this XOXO. I gotta find some way to pull it in to, I gotta find some way to pull in that purple. And I put that purple down and now I just realized I don't have anything purple. So I gotta find some way to tie that purple in because I don't have anything purple and it's going to make me nuts. Well, I could just cover up most of the purple. I could just cover it up. We could just do that. We could just cover it up. I don't have anything purple. So this purple is really dark and it's driving me nuts. So I'm going to probably just cover it up. All right, so I have this thing. This is happy. Yep, there we go. So we are making that purple go away where it is much less offensive because I don't have anything. Oh, I would 100% spill it. Are we kidding? This is me we're talking about. I would 100% spill it. Um, and I would spill it on my, like, new Gemini. Like, that is where it would go. Um, and I would cry. Not happy tears this time. And since I know myself, and I know what my limits are, and I am not Crystal Idunate. Also, I've been practicing how to say Crystal's name. I'm not there yet, but I get better every single day. Um... So since I know that I would spill it, I just, I'm not having an, I'm not having a grown up beverage. I also, I'd probably just start like waving my cider at you all. And then it would just be like everywhere. And it would just, it would literally be a disaster. Have, uh, Crystal, you are right. These vellum florals are the most delightful thing. All right. So I think what I might do is put that down there and then put like a little banner and stamp something. All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to stamp something. Guys, I told you this was going to be quick. It's just scrapbooking this tiny little photo of Minerva just being a complete ham in the bed, just taking up. Also, her new thing is, like, sleeping on my pajamas. So, like, I take off my, my PJs in the morning, and then she sleeps on them. Uh, Elizabeth, I am I am a little bit Hispanic, but I am not that Hispanic. My family is from Panama, but I am very much an American. And... You think that I wouldn't struggle with Crystal's name, but I do. But I, I, I also believe in saying people's names correctly. I've had my name mispronounced my entire life, and I really believe in saying people's names correctly. I think it's very important that we say people's names correctly. So I'm practicing hers. I don't know if I've gotten it, but I'm practicing. I'm getting better and better every day. Red wine and Bloody Marys. 
My husband likes Bloody Marys, Hubba. I'm not a Bloody Mary. I can't get behind Bloody Marys because they're a little too savory for me. And I don't like savory drinks. Um, inundate. That's... <laughs> you know, I really thought that's what her name was the first time I saw it. I really thought it was Inundate. And I was like, that can't be right. And then I was like, and then she said it. And I was like, of course it's not Inundate. I'm just special. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yes. Um, yeah, no. I didn't, I really didn't. But that's why I don't have... That's why I don't have drinks. And when I drink at my desk, I have it in a, a hydro flask. Because uh, it's a sealed... It's a sealed container. Um, and so... That's what, that's the only way I drink at my desk. Joshua brings me drinks at my desk all the time, and I'm always, like, terrified that I'm going to spill them. But we will have ciders after the live is over. Don't you worry. Falafel and I will, I'm going to go scrub my hands. I'm not cleaning this mess. I'm not, it's making me sad already, so I'm not cleaning it. I will clean it tomorrow. It will be okay if it waits a day. You guys, should I make Crystal do ink blending for the prep party? Should we be, should we do that? Should we, could that be a thing? Yes, yeah, so that's how she told me how to say it. It's e duniate. And I've been practicing because we're going to host a podcast together. And I, I think I should be able to say her name right. Um, so I've been practicing. It's e duniate. Um, I'm getting it. Not, it's not there yet, but I'm getting it. I'm getting better and better every day. Um, and you think with having a name like mine that is notoriously difficult, I'd be better at other people's names. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying, but I'm not. All right, so I'm going to stamp something. Do I want to stamp something? I do want to stamp. I think I'm going to stamp something. I'm going to put all this ephemera back in this package, though, so I don't lose any of it. Idunyate. Uh, but you know what? I wasn't much of a drinker before and then this year happens and now I really shouldn't, I should not use that as an excuse to be bad. I cannot blame this year for my choices, but I wasn't much of a drinker and then 2020 happened and then quarantine happened and I was literally home alone for like days on end. And so I would drink to pass the time. It's, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> Joshua, shut up. <laughs> He's laughing at me. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't, and Joshua now, we, we now limit our drinking to brunch. Like, we only drink at brunch now. Uh, so we've gotten better. But I literally was home alone, and so I would drink. Because that helps the time go by. That, that sounds terrible saying it out loud. Um, it does. All right, so I'm just going to stamp. Shut up, Joshua. Stop judging me. My husband is judging me. I'm. Um, what are you doing over there then? Like five beers is a lot for me. He's telling me that I wasn't really drinking because it was only five beers. But when you go from drinking no beers to five beers, five beers is a lot. You said five beers in three months. That's a lot, considering I had five beers in zero months. You guys don't have lives where your husbands can like supervise you and and make comments on all the things that you're saying because it's not okay. Um. Hold on, Crystal, wait, tell us the story. Wait, I'm missing the story. Hold on. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll oh, see April. April also upped her drinking due to COVID falafel, so judge not. All right, guys, I'm just looking for a sentiment. I don't know if I want to stamp a whole quote out. Do I want to stamp? No, I don't want to stamp words. So I'm going to go look for something that's at hand that I can use to stamp something for Minerva and I. I have bags and bags of stamps everywhere, so I'm sure I could find something. Oh, there we go. I have this, uh, ha ha ha, perfection. I have this LE Studio stamp set that was out on my desk somewhere. I'm just looking for a little bit of cardstock that I can stamp on. I have scraps of cardstock everywhere, so I just use that. Hold on. Heba's name, so Heba's first name's really easy. Um, I'll see, Heba, I've been saying your last name wrong because I thought it was just Alcibai. But it's Alcibai. Alcibai. So I've been saying your last name wrong. Um, oh, this is really helpful. My last name's Gordon, which is very easy. Um, it's Gordon. So my first name, on the other hand, people have been saying wrong my entire life. All right, guys, should I just go? With, oh, so many. There's good times together with you. Fun and special moments captured. Love you always and forever. 
All right, I'm gonna go with fun and special moments captured. Even though I really wanna go with love you always and forever. But I feel like every time I stamp a picture of Minerva, I caption it love you always and forever. So we're gonna go with special moments captured. I'm gonna grab. Also, I re... Josh, are you okay? I recently discovered that the Stamper Secret Weapon has been discontinued. I am very sorry about that because it is like my favorite thing. Um, so my husband and I go to brunch almost every weekend, uh, Millie. And I think we go to brunch because it's an excuse to start drinking at 1130 in the morning. Because uh, I think brunch is the only time where it's acceptable to be drinking at 1130 in the morning. You guys, I stamped that without a misty. Who even am I? Wild. It's just wild that I did that. I thought about pulling out the misty and I was like, I should be able to stamp this without the misty and I was correct. All right, so we're gonna put this quick sentiment on it. What are you looking for, April? April, what are you looking for? I think I missed your earlier comment. I'm sorry. Oh, the Stamper Secret Weapon. Yeah, it's, it's been discontinued. Um, Crystal and I realized that because people were asking us for it. And it's been, whoa, Crystal, how do you say it's, well, is it guillotine? Is That's not how you pronounce it, though. Oh, I really wish there was a way to find that. For the, I wish there was a way for you to tell us how your last name is pronounced because that is probably the most unique thing I've ever heard. I really wish there was a way to know how to pronounce that. Yes, so craft foam. So the Stamper Secret Weapon is just really good foam. So I'm sure any foam would work. Crystal and I are just really big fans of that. But I'm sure any foam, any foam would work. My husband's last name is Halfwell. I did not change my name when we got married. Um, I'm not sure how he feels about that and I have not asked him. Uh, but I didn't change my name when we got married, so I kept my maiden name. My maiden name's Gordon. Um, and I just know people would mispronounce Halfle all the time. Like, I just know they will. Like, I, I'm, there's no doubt in my head. Oh, a little stamp shop in New York. Wait, Wendy, what part of New York are you from? If you're, like, in the city, we should, like, do something someday. When COVID is not, like, a big deal, I guess. All right, so that's what I'm thinking about titling it. All right, that's, that's probably what I'm leaning towards. So this did not take the five minutes that I thought it was going to take, but it didn't take very long. It's easily the shortest thing I made all night. Everything else I made took forever. This didn't take very long at all. And it probably took 20 minutes. And I think most of the time was spent faffing about with my clusters. Du ta. Du toi? Du toi. Oh, it's French, though. Heather, your name's French, right? I think I would have gotten that right because I had, I took French all through middle school and all through high school. So I li I like to think that I would have gotten du toi, right? But actually, I'm not making any promises. All right, you guys. So here is this quick little photo of Minerva documented. Um, I'm going to grab my scrapbook.com journal pen. Okay, and I just wrote, love these little moments with my best girl. Uh, I, I didn't want to add, I didn't think a giant story was necessary for that one. Um, and that, that is that. It's 9 o'clock, so I'm right on schedule. I got three pages made, so here we go. If you guys are joining us a little bit later, let's. I'll show you what we made today. So we made this one, documenting some fall leaves, and then... I made, look at my fingers, this is wild. And then I made this one with some stamping and some heat embossing and some embossed resist documenting a selfie. And then we made this one, which is just a picture of me and my best girl. Not me and my best girl, it's just a picture of my best girl. And I think I'm gonna punch the holes in it right now because I think it's gonna go in on this side. I'm gonna have to trim this. Hold on. I just want to put the holes in so I remember which side is going to go on. Otherwise, later I'm going to forget. Shucks. Later I'm going to forget. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I just want to put the holes in it because I'm going to forget later. And then I'm going to be like, where was this supposed to go? And I want it to go right behind that. 
Okay, perfection. Pop this in. There we go. All right, you guys. So that is a little bit at my October not quite daily catch up. Um, I like that it's a mix of like fall. See, here's one of the things we made during my live last time. And like I said, I have other pages that I just need to put in here. So I have some things that I made that are like traditionally fall theme. Like this is a traditional fall thing, but then this is like not like this is just something pretty. And this is definitely not a traditional fall thing. I love the colors in here and I like that it's not a traditional fall color palette. Um, cause I'm gonna be mixing and matching. So that's it for tonight, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed hanging out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the live. You guys are talking about so many things and it's so hard to keep up with the conversation when I'm trying to make things. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for hanging out, friends. Um, happy Monday. I hope to see you all in the Mighty Network. Don't forget Friday is craft hour. And this craft hour, we're talking about December daily. So if you wanna come and ask questions about December daily and stuff like that, um, that's what we're gonna be doing this Friday. But I'm going to attempt to make some sense of this so I can go to bed with a clean floor. And I'll see you guys next Monday. So have a great night, guys. We're gonna go to the end screen just for a few seconds because I really like the end screen. And I will see you around.